presence that we just know that all things are possible all things there's nothing impossible father thank you for your presence here tonight thank you for the faith that you released in this room tonight thank you father it's so amazing lord it's in your presence we have this encounter with you where we hear your voice we experience your love and joy Thank you, Father, that in your presence is a fullness of joy. More, Lord. We want to experience your joy to the fullest that we can. Thank you, Lord, that, that your joy is our strength. It's not seriousness that's our strength or religiosity. <laughs> it's your joy <laughs> that's really cool <laughs> oh thank you father thank you for this worship team <laughs> thank you for touching us tonight thank you for the angels that are in this room father I just know there's this I don't know how many but I know there's a lot of angels here tonight we thank you for that. We thank you, Jesus, that where two or three gather in your name, you're with us. And we know you're always with us, but there's something different when we gather together in your name. A greater manifestation of your presence. Thank you for that, Jesus. I, I, you know, whenever we enter into worship, I always ask the Lord, is there something you want to do as we come out of worship? Is there something, you know, like a body part that you want to heal or something like that? And I saw an interesting vision. Did you get a word of knowledge for healing? You did. Okay. Um, I saw a really interesting vision when I asked the Lord that question. What I saw was, look, was what looked like this huge sand dune. And there was a, does everybody know what a loader is? Like a piece of heavy equipment loader? So this loader was going up to the sand dune, trying, trying to move the sand dune. And every time it would get a scoop of sand, the sand would just fall down. And it would actually cover the front part of the loader to where could, the loader couldn't even get traction. And even though the loader was actually moving some of that sand, it was like there was this feeling if loaders had feelings, there was this feeling that it was getting nowhere. That actually, the more that it scooped, the more it got trapped, almost. And then all of a sudden, the next scene I saw was this beautiful wave came in, and it just washed that sand dune completely away. And I asked the Lord, I said, what is that, Lord? And I, I felt like the loader represented... Maybe a number of people here that you feel like you've been trying to, to move a mountain almost. <laughs> and like every time you scoop in, it's like, oh my goodness, now I can hardly move. And you back up and you get another load and it almost seemed like it was endless for you. Almost like, is this mountain ever going to move? Is that anybody? Is your battery 
Well, why would you do that? I just put new batteries in it. <laughs> oh, it just went out, I think. Did it? There, there, there you go. Just hit it. Let's see if the, somebody watch if the green light stays on. <laughs> so anyway, if it goes out again, we'll we'll do something different. But I just felt like there were some in here that's kind of can relate to that uh, loader. You feel like, man, that's been me. I've been. If that's you, just just lift your hand. Just hi. I just want to see how many people that feels like. Okay. So go ahead and put your hands down. I I just feel like we're gonna do a prophetic act. <laughs> So if that's you, even if there's a little hill in your life that needs to be moved, you can do this too. Yeah. But I felt, like, I felt like the Lord is making a great exchange for some people tonight. Yeah. It's like you've been working hard, and he's just wanting to do it by his spirit. You know, that water, that wave that came in is living water. Yeah. It's his spirit moving upon something. And so just close your eyes for a moment. And I want you... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm trying really. So I want you to just. <laughs> that must be in his presence. Uh, just, just close your eyes and just imagine that mountain. But you know, don't imagine it the way it is. Imagine it like a mountain, like a big sand dune. Because, you know, the thing about a sand dune is, really, the waves can just wash it away. Mm -hmm. Just uh, just repeat after me. Father, Father release the living water, release the living water. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to, <laughs> to wash this thing away. And, Father, I believe. Father, I believe. You can do more, you can do more, more in a minute, in a minute. Or, a or a second, by your spirit, by your spirit. Then, I can do it a I can do it in a lifetime. So, Father, release a miracle. So, Father, release a miracle. And move that mountain. And move that mountain. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Woo! Oh, there was one more thing. Well, actually, there's a couple more things I saw, but hey, <laughs> you have some. Actually, maybe it's good before you come up here. I actually saw all of us. You know, Paul said, don't get drunk on wine that leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And um, I just felt like we need to do another prophetic act. You know, the Bible's full of prophetic acts. I mean, just really crazy stuff. You know, like throw a stick in the water and the axe head's going to float. Yeah. What the, what's that? You know? But it was symbolic. It was like the stick was showing the axe head what it was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Hey, because the stick floats on water, right? Mm -hmm. Usually. <laughs> well, that was a floating stick, I'm sure. But anyway, prophetic act. So close your eyes again. And just put your hand out like you have a, a goblet. And it's full of his wine. <laughs> you know, his wine's the best. Yes. <laughs> Let's say this Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Fill me up. Fill me up. up. And just tip back your head <laughs> and drink. Ah. You know, he wants us to live in a state of fullness. Yeah, That's where we're supposed to be all the time. Yeah. You know, the, I, I, it, it's just weird to me that he chose being full of the Spirit to be similar to being drunk on wine. You know, the day of Pentecost, you know, they're like all acting crazy. And the people were like, well, I think it was Peter says, I don't suppose we're drunk on wine. You know, it's early in the morning still, and this is the Holy Spirit, you know. So they were thinking, these guys are drunk on wine. You know, sometimes when the Holy Spirit falls on you, it's like, wow, what's that? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's okay. <laughs> but we are supposed, is it hot in here? Is it just yes, me? Yes, yes, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Okay, I thought I was just hot. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> Valerie, you got <laughs> and now you want me to stand up. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, yeah. come on up here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. If we freeze back there on the back, you can always rotate to the front. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I got a soft tissue soreness to the left of, it's C5, it's right where your uh, neck and your shoulders kind of meet right back there. Does anybody have a sore neck back there? If you don't, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sore too. <laughs> oh, well, we'll get rid of that. Mine's kind of sore because I worked out it yesterday. Well, that's all right. Don't feel bad. Yeah, that's doesn't fake. matter. And then the small of the back on the right side, um, the muscle that runs up. Here, right, right about yep. here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe me too. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna get a makeover today, right? Okay. Right. And then um, usually you pay good money for those. Yeah, that's right. This is great. Yeah. Well, he's good. <laughs> and then underneath the left arm. There was a, a burning and like a tingly moving toward the front. So. Could be somebody else and move you that way. Yeah. So those are the things he likes. He wants to heal. Those are like text messages that he sends through my body. And every time I get one and the people that I know get them, people get healed. Amen. So who all yeah. got something? Why don't you guys stand up and the people around them, why don't you gather around them? And just go after it. Just declare healing. Yeah, more Holy Spirit. Go after Caleb. Thank you, Lord. Get bold. Make declarations. Healing. Thank you, Lord. The healing is here. Yeah. Oh, more, more anointing, Holy Spirit. More power. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. More Holy Spirit, more power, more energy. Well, check it out, you guys. We're getting prayed for. Check it out. Yep. Pretty good. Completely. Or so. Let's say started at ten. What, what's it at now? Like a two. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm just okay. Let's say started at a four. What's it at now? It's a two. Okay. Why don't you guys go out of this morning? Kayla, you got some relief back there? Okay. Um, my back is what's starting to get a sore. It's probably as Satan as well. My neck, actually. Yeah, really good. All right. <laughs> Praise you. Go after finish the back. Is this Kathy back there? Is getting the surgery? What's going on, Kathy? You getting some healing? Yes. You got a right shoulder? You got a right shoulder? Okay, go ahead. This guy's been turning that crazy. You better get yeah. 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 Yeah.
you can still come get healing there. There will be healing. Um, but yeah, Global Legacies this weekend, it will be here at Epic, um, Friday night and Saturday, pretty much all day. So if you want to know more about times um, and the schedule and what that looks like, there are flyers around the room and on the, on the door there. Um, there might be one next to you. But just refer to that. There's also um, information on Facebook and on uh, <clears throat> uh, the epiccenter.org, if I can think here. Um, but normally, healing rooms are every Saturday. When but, you said uh, flyers, I thought about angels. Yes. Yeah, just ask the angel that's next to you, you know, about the schedule. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, prayer and intercession for Epic every Wednesday at 10 a.m. here, if you want to come join. Um, it's awesome time. Oh. Right now, so she's got more interesting. Is that the Lone Ranger? Um, also, if you want a little more prayer before the prayer inter intercession, Wednesday mornings at 8 a.m. downtown, there's prayer, and you can ask your pastor for more detail of that if you are interested or where to meet yeah, exactly. Yeah, we do it for a walk, we do it off. Oh, off. I am off again. I was trying to be off because she was talking. I'm on. Uh, yeah, we meet across the street from the library, right there on uh, Wall Street. At 8 a.m. 8 a.m. a week. And then you get to come here for 10 a.m. prayer and intercession. So, Wednesday. Wednesday. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah tomorrow. Um, and then, let's see. I'm assuming that this Saturday, men's breakfast is not on. But normally, we have men's breakfast on Saturday mornings. <laughs> so, you know, if you're interested in that next week, the yes. weekend, Saturday mornings at 10 a.m., mm -hmm. and the location changes up week to week, so you can ask Keith. He can tell you where to go. Right there. Yeah. Um, also, we have a new study that we just started with Barb Crumweed. I thought I saw uh -huh. Barb right there. The amazing Barb. Crumweed. Yes. The amazing, the beautiful. Um, it's called Christ Revealed, and um, it's a video series. Yeah. And I'm getting oh, just see my channel. You're hot. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> they are meeting every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. at Barb's house. Um, if you want to join them, talk to Barb and um, get some more details because it's going to be awesome. Um, and then we have, let's see, Youth Night with Sandy Shores. Um, that is every last Sunday of the month um, for ages 14 through 21. And that's at 5 p.m. at Sandy's house. So the next one's January 27th. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, of course, Global Legacy, and I already covered that. If you no, want more details. Who's coming again? Oh, I don't know. Donna and Steven De Silva. It's going to be awesome. Yes, it's going to be such a good time. And we're having different breakouts um, throughout Saturday. So look on that schedule because it's going to be awesome. If you want good seats, you better get here early. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> we're going to be full. Um, and then we started a new thing every second Sunday. Um, we're doing Epic Live. And so this last Sunday was our first one, and it was awesome. Um, so our next one will be in February on the 10th at 10.30 a.m. But um, basically, mm -hmm, yeah. um, basically, we're doing um, live worship, live message, instead of live streaming. So, you guys uh, Mexico. Oh, yeah, we're going to Mexico. You don't get to be here for it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> get to go to Mexico instead. I'm not jealous. Um, and yeah, there you go. There's a, you can if you have any questions about anything, guys, you can always go to the epiccenter.org and we have an event calendar on there. You can look at all the different events and all the information, um, contact information, etc. Or so, talk to Kayla. Or talk to me. 
Also, if you don't receive the um, Epic newsletters or Global Legacy newsletters and you would like to, let me know and I'll get your info and put it in there. Good job, Kayla. Yeah. I love it that we celebrate the announcements and the announcement giver. What an encouraging place. Well, we're going to take offerings. Let's let's pray, Father. <laughs> thank you for all that you give us. Thank you, Lord, that we are a blessed people. Not just because of the financial blessing you've given us. We're just blessed because we know your son, Jesus. And we've been washed in the blood. But we also are blessed by you financially and in so many other ways, Father. So thank you for that. You are a good God. You've placed us in a great nation. Thank you for that, Lord. And just uh, just thank you that we can worship you freely. We don't have to be concerned about somebody uh, coming and arresting us. Lord, and while I'm thinking about that, let's just we just lift up the missionaries across the world, Lord, that are ministering in places where they have to be concerned about that. And Father, we pray for your protection, that your angels will surround them, that you will give them wisdom and strategies from heaven. How to, how to reach the people in those nations. Protect them and bless them in every way, Father. Give them courage and strength. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, look who moved in next to me. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Good. Looking good. I was looking for my chair. My chair disappeared, but my feet just get tired. But I'll be fine. So... Uh, a number of you know, not all of you probably know, so I'll just kind of let you guys know that, um, you know, at the beginning of the year, we were just praying, Lord, give us a word for this year. And the Lord, actually, I, I wrote out some things that the Lord gave me, but what really stood out to me is the Lord said, push, push, push. And so I began to go on this journey, Lord, push. I, in other words, the Lord wants to birth something right? When he says push, he's talking about birthing, the birthing process. And it felt like that the Lord, well, the Lord did. He took me actually to Romans 8, 18, 19, 20, 21, where it says all creation awaits the revealing of the sons of God. Or it literally means children. It's, it doesn't exclude women, of course. <laughs> and that the Lord wants to take us into a deeper realization of what it means to be a child of God. And actually during worship, the Lord reminded me of Romans 8, and we're actually going to spend time in Romans 8 and just kind of a discussion tonight, kind of a little different uh, way of doing it. But it's like there's this journey going through Romans 8. In the beginning, you know, it says, therefore there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And it starts with talking about salvation and the Jesus paid the price, and then it talks about life in the spirit, and then it moves into the identity of children, being children. And this has kind of been the journey of the church. If you look at the church since the Great Reformation, all of a sudden there was this thought that Jesus paid the price for all of our sins. And then it finally got to this place of, wow, we can live by the Holy Spirit, and God began to lead the church by his spirit, not because he was resistant, because we were. We didn't understand life in the spirit. And then it moves on to this whole thing of sonship. And then right after that, it starts talking about creation waiting for the revealing. It's like this progression of where he's taken us. And I really believe this is what he's doing in this season. That he wants to take us to a new level of understanding of what it means to be his children. And the authority that we have because of that. You know, we get all this stuff. Yeah, we're saved and, you know, we're to be led by the Spirit and we're children of God. But I, what we haven't fully got, and I believe he's wanting us to get in this season, is the authority that we carry as children of God. And so when, when the Lord tells us something like push, 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 you know, this is what I'm trying to birth in my church and my children so that they have an understanding of this. We want to go after that. Part of that whole word that he gave me after that was, this isn't just going to happen with idle hands. 
I'm looking for those who will partner with me in this. You know, this that's the way the Lord is. He's looking for partnership. He's looking for people that will say, you know, I mean, just like we read Isaiah, you know, who will go for us? And Isaiah's like, okay, I'll go. You know, and that's what he's looking for is people that will actually press the envelope with him. That will take risks with him. That will push beyond what we know today alongside of him because he wants to break through into something new and fresh. And I really believe that's where we are right now as a church and at the church. He's, he's trying for us to get a hold of it. He's, he's wanting us to grasp what the word really says. And so we're going to go through Romans 8 and just kind of talk about it as we go through and see where the Lord takes us. We're going to be in the Passion Translation. Oh, yes. Amen. And so if you have the Passion Translation, you might want to open up to that. i got to open up my shirt. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it under control, baby. Not right now. Hey, see so what I have to deal with. <laughs> You know, the, the best thing that I, I'm excited about, whoa, let me take the reverb out of here. Um, okay. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sound guy's up here with me is, and my wife. Um, you know, Danny Silk talks all the time about you get to be responsible for you, and I get to be responsible for me. So as we go through this season... Let's, let's make sure we don't go, oh, well, Susie Q needs to, you know. Let's go look in the mirror and let's get ourselves straight. Because that, that's where it's at. We get to be responsible for ourselves. When we get to heaven, the Lord's not going to say, hey, why didn't you tell Susie Q about such and such and her character? The Lord's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? So... Let's get real. Mm -hmm. Let's get down to business. And let's press in together. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah. yeah. Do I need this? Or? Uh, you can, actually, I forgot to grab my glasses. I left them out oh, great. in the Excuse. truck. So. All right. So. I think you do a better job anyway. Oh, I do. Okay. So, Romans <laughs> See, gentlemen, 8. that's just a little example of what you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> you do. The very beginning? Yes. Okay. So now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. So can we stop there for sure? a second? Sure. <laughs> there, um, there was this time years ago that I was praying with a, a guy and his wife, and she actually had a lot of guilt on her. I mean, it was her whole life, and it was in Mexico, and guilt's kind of a big thing that comes out of a lot of the religious activity down there, the guilt people into stuff, and there's manipulation and all this, and she had just a, a, a lot of guilt, and, and I, I took her to this scripture, Romans 8, 1, I said, I just want you to read that out loud, and she read it, and the Holy Spirit said, tell her to read it again. I said, you need to read it again. And actually, he told me to do that, and it was about the fifth or sixth time, probably. She read it, and all of a sudden, she broke and began to weep. And she got set free from something in that moment. You see, we can read Scripture, and it can you know, kind of do this thing, you know, tap us on the head a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's good. But what needs to take place is for Scripture to get into our heart. Because that's where the transformation takes place. You know, she read that several times and did, just didn't get it. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, that's a good scripture. But that final time that she read it, it so impacted her heart that everything changed for her from that day forward. Mm -hmm. That's the power of scripture, but it's got to get here. And how many of you know, you know, we could read the same scripture many times over, but it's that time that we connect with it in the spirit that something changes. Yes. So can you read that again? All right. Yeah. It, it, this is huge, guys. So now the case is closed. All right. Boom. Read that again. Now I the wish case I had a gavel. is closed. Boom. 
<laughs> there remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. For God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish because the law was limited by the weakness of human nature. Wow. I actually uh, had a revelation today that that's probably why God created bacon to prove to us that we couldn't fulfill the law. I love bacon, okay? <laughs> no, wait, bro. No, you better read that again. I really lost the moment. Sorry, guys. <laughs> For the law of the Spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. For God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish because the law was limited by the weakness of human nature. Yet, what? Can we do something really quick? <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's all right if we don't. But, I mean, this is beautiful, but I, I can tell you there's times that in those in certain moments where I remember something I did years ago and go, oh. oh mm -hmm. And you have to have the revelation in that moment that that's not you. Mm -hmm. And that's not God. Mm -hmm. It's the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. So I just, can we just pray through something really quick? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Just close yeah. your eyes. I'll close mine. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. if I've made any agreements with guilt, with guilt or condemnation, or condemnation. or self-disapproval self or, self or shame, please forgive me for that. And I break those agreements right now in Jesus' name. I break those agreements right now in Jesus' name. And I renounce, and I renounce every spirit, every spirit connected, to those agreements. connected to those agreements. And I say go. And I say go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Woo, I feel better. That was good. <laughs> go ahead. Yet God sent us his son in human form to identify with human weakness. Clothed with human, yeah, humanity, God's son gave his body to be the sin offering so that God could once and for all condemn the guilt and power of sin. So now every righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one living his life in us. Did now, you hear that? Hallelujah. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. So Let's now every righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one living his life in us. Oh. Is that not good? What does the scripture say that it's for freedom that he set us free? Mm -hmm. We're free of the law. It's been fulfilled. Taken care of. Wow. And we are free to live. Not according to our flesh. But by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Amen. Those who are motivated, yes? Yeah, I, I'm just going to okay. elaborate on that for a moment because okay. I've seen a lot of rules and regulations in my life. Mm -hmm. Don't do this, don't do that, you know, stay away from it. You know, all of those things and all the can'ts. And, you know, some of them are good, but some of them are really like don't dance because you may or, you know, what I'm saying or don't have a glass of wine because you might or... You know, whatever that looks like, and it's it's most of it's fear-based. Mm -hmm. That's right. That I can't control myself. If I do this or I do that, I'm going to lose it or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Isn't it amazing that the Lord isn't that way? Mm -hmm. It's life by the Spirit. It's living a life listening to the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so important that we're filled up every day. Mm -hmm. That we're in that place of communion with Him, you know, and we just live with Him. 
Oh, what a beautiful thing. You know, the religion wants us to look at sin mm -hmm. and keep our eyes on sin and don't do this and don't do that. And, and it's all of these don'ts. And if you work hard enough, you might be able to accomplish something over here so that God will show you a little bit of favor. You know what I'm saying? It's man's attempt to do something that Jesus had already done for us. Wow. Yeah. We should be excited. Yeah. Huh. Amen. <laughs> All right, those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Mm. Those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. Wow. So what is our motivation? Let's just close our eyes for a second. And let's just ask the Lord, Lord, what is my motivation? And that's not to guilt anybody, but how many know when he shows us something, it's just to deal with it? Yeah. And what are we pursuing? Yeah, you can open your eyes. You know, if the Lord spoke to you about something, you know, if you want prayer afterwards or, you know, at least pray with the Lord or pray through it with the Lord. That's what I was trying to say. You know, when the Lord brings conviction, you know, years ago, I, I in a conversation many, many years ago with the Lord, I said, Lord, I ask for your conviction. Because I came to an understanding of that his conviction was to help me. It wasn't to hurt me. His conviction wasn't so he could hit me with a two by four. It was so that he could just help me. Yeah, I mean... When I first became a Christian, that's how I lived my Christian walk. I was thinking that, man, I've got to be on this straight and narrow thing, and if I get off it at all, God's going to knock me around with a two-by-four or something or strike me dead or whatever, you know. And I was in this constant place of life of fear of the Lord, unhealthy fear of the Lord. And he began to show me that it was his good pleasure to make me a son. <laughs> I mean, I used to think... Honestly, this is just how I used to think. That I was going to get to heaven, and the Father wanted to cremate me. And Jesus would say, hey, whoa, 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 I did pay for this one. And the Father would go, oh, okay. I mean, I used to think that way. And it's, if, you think, if you are thinking that way, we need to pray afterwards. Because he's a good father. He's an amazing father. And he wants the best for us. He wants us to fulfill everything that he created us for. It's incredible. He wants us intimacy with us. Amazing. That's what he gave us. It's amazing. It's incredible. So, you know, in your life, welcome the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You know, I love what Grant Cook says. You know, whenever the Lord convicts us or something, there's always something better he wants to give us. Amen. What a great word. Isn't that the truth? So anyway, thanks for letting me interrupt. She is. She's like the best. She is the best wife in the world. Yeah, Not wife. Like, she like, is. <laughs> it's like you're trying to model all the rest after her. <laughs> For the that? mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the spirit finds life and peace. So wow. we were going to go into, you know, the. Remember, we were talking this afternoon, and was like, okay, what is. What is this? What is the control of, of Oh, you're talking uh, about in Galatians, <laughs> what we were looking at? Yeah, yeah the fruit of the spirit and the fruit of the flesh. Yeah, Galatians 5. And I don't have my glasses, but oh. you can read it. Let me find it for you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if they're out in my truck, I could probably just try them off. You're only kidding me. It's off. unlocked. It's the silver ones, I think, that are sitting on the dash. So this is Life of the Spirit. It's right there. But I can't read it, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the big letter edition. <laughs> Be healed. Listen, we need a word of knowledge for eyes. Come on. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to read you um, the life by the Spirit. So, 
Um, Galatians 5, 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Okay, here's the fleshy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So, rather serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command that you love your neighbor as yourself. And if you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. The flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit is what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, Factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like that. I warn you, as I did before, <laughs> that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So here's the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Mm -hmm. Against such things, there is no law. Wow. So that, that's, that's what they're talking about. You know, it's kind of interesting, on a, just a quick side note. Um, it says fruit of the Spirit. It doesn't say fruits of the Spirit. Where it speaks in the Bible of gifts, it's plural, gifts of the Spirit. But this is fruit of the Spirit. In other words, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have every one of those characteristics of a fruit. So the question is, and, and this is something I've talked to the Lord about, Lord, is there one of those characteristics of the fruit that it's not moving in my life the way it should? If so, what is it that's stopping that up? Because it's on my end. Mm -hmm. Because the Spirit's given without measure. His Holy Spirit lives in us, and every one of the characteristics of the fruit is within us. So if one of those characteristics or a number of those characteristics are not being released in our lives, there's actually a reason why. And it's not because he held them back. It's because somewhere we've resisted the move in our lives. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sort of? That makes sense, Ann? Yeah. You had a funny look on your face. And I, thought, well, I did my best. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to verse 6. It says, for the mindset of the flesh is death. But the mindset controlled by the Spirit lead, finds life and peace. In fact, the mindset focused on the flesh fights God's plan wow. and refuses to submit to his direction because it can't. It's just there's too much conflict there. For no matter how hard they try, God finds no pleasure with those who are controlled by the flesh. But when the Spirit of Christ empowers oh, oh that was mine but when the spirit of christ empowers your life you are not dominated by the flesh but by the spirit and if you are not joined to the spirit of the anointed one you are not of him so donna and i were talking about <clears throat> this is going to be good news for some of you I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit does go into the bathroom with you. <laughs> he goes everywhere. He goes everywhere with you. But I, I heard this line, because we were in the middle of this, and I had to go to the bathroom, comb my hair. 
And I heard this line, and I wrote it down. It says, our pursuit of God must be greater than sin's pursuit of us. And I thought, wow, what a great revelation, Lord. Can I read that again? Yeah. This isn't scripture. This is Holy Spirit me. But our pursuit of God must be greater than sin's pursuit of us. And I thought of that scripture. I think it's with Cain and Abel that, you know, he said that, that sin crouches at your door. You know, sin wants to destroy us. And the whole idea here is if we're pursuing God, with everything that's within us, then sin really doesn't have a chance, right? I mean, it was when David chose not to go to war, and it was a time, the Bible tells us it was a time when kings went to war. David didn't go to war. David stayed home, and he, he looked at pornography, so to speak. He was on his rooftop watching the bathhouse. And then from there, it turned into adultery, and from there, it turned into murder. And it really was because David wasn't pursuing what he was supposed to be pursuing. Yeah. And when we pursue God with everything that's within us, that other stuff doesn't impact us usually at all if we're in pursuit of God. It's when we aren't doing what we're supposed to be doing that those things can come against us. Yes. Verse 10, now Christ lives his life in you. And even though your body may be dead because of the effects of sin, his life-giving spirit imparts life to you because you are fully accepted by God. Well, what, how much accepted? Fully. All. Well, I do, do you totally. think we should all repeat that? Go ahead. You guys... Say after me. I am fully, I am fully accepted, accepted by God. <laughs> and how do you spell fully there? That's F-U-L-L. Why, right? Okay. I am fully <laughs> accepted by In God. In the Greek, it's not foolishly. Yeah. It's fully. It's, <laughs> it's it, it literally means completely. And really think about that for a second. Because I tell you, I've struggled with that at times in my life, you know. I am fully accepted, totally, absolutely, completely embraced by God. Mm -hmm. Am I living my life that way? Yeah. That's the question. Am I living my life knowing that I'm fully embraced by God? Or is there still that part of me that thinks I have to earn something, you know, to get a better embrace? Yeah, that's good. Or, you know, he sort of likes me. Or he loves me, but he doesn't like me. Anybody ever have a thought like that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet he's fully embraced us. That's just, that's good news. That's good news. Really good news. Because he doesn't know me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that yeah. could be the thought, yeah. <laughs> in spite, in, in spite of those places where we've fallen short, he is still fully embracing us. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, that's, that's just amazing, isn't it? That's a good mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. My neighbor might not be, but God's embracing us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, God raised Jesus to life. And since God's spirit of resurrection lives in you, he will also raise your dying body to life by the same spirit that breathes life into you. Yes. Mm. Well, come yes. on. Ooh. His spirit brings forth life. Think about that. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead Ooh, brought life into his body. The same spirit that brought Lazarus back to life. And then I think when Jesus was resurrected, wasn't there some 500 people that were also resurrected at the same time? And they ended up walking around the streets of Jerusalem. <laughs> Can you imagine what a sight that was? <laughs> Can you remember all this? Literally, don't you? Oh my gosh. Yes. Willie, you're missing me. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I can't go down that road, but I probably shouldn't. <laughs> well, I, I can testify in 
with this scripture. I really, in this last season of fighting cancer, you know, they take you through chemo and radiation until you're almost dead, you know, and it's just, it's just awful. And, and being able to just be in his presence 24 seven and being so intentional about uh, speaking life to your, your mortal body, um, this scripture is huge for me because it, it speaks of really something that I hadn't known before until I had to go through that cancer crap to know this, this scripture right here is truth. Mm -hmm. And when you live your life in Jesus, when you are speaking life to your mortal body, and it, it may not be cancer. It may be something else. It may be something that you think would be smaller than cancer, but it's actually affecting your whole life. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's affecting your attitude. It's affecting yeah. your energy. Mm -hmm. Start mm -hmm. with this scripture. And what script? Where are you in? Uh, are this you? is We're the Romans. Romans. Still in Romans. Yeah, we went eleven. To, okay, eleven. So yes, God raised Jesus to life, and since God's Spirit of Resurrection lives in you, He will also raise your dy dying body to life by the same Spirit that breathes life into you. Amen. Amen. I. Well, that was beautiful music. That's nice. I uh, I will actually speak things like Holy Spirit within me. I just release you right now into my body to strengthen me, to bring life, to get, you know, just those kind of things. I just declare those kind of things and pray those kind of things all the time. The power of God is within us. Jesus yeah, said right. the kingdom of heaven is within you. And so is you know? authority. Yeah. So knowing who you are and whose you are, because remember, this is all about identity. It's all about knowing who you are and whose you are. So if you've got that authority, if you know that you have authority over your body, then take the authority. Speak it. Um there's, there's a lot of times when I say, go to the mirror and look yeah. yourself in the eyes and tell you how much you love yourself. Ooh, that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. I go down the line. I love you, Bobby. I love your sh my shoulders. Oh, thank you, shoulders, for being so strong. It sounds really silly, but when you speak to your body and you can go all the way down from head to toe, and thank the good Lord for everything that you've got and the strength that he has in, within you. There's power in that. The Bible With says authority. the power of life and death is in the tongue. I wonder what that means. <laughs> so that's another thing, you know. What are you speaking to your body about? What are you speaking to your soul about? Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. And what are you speaking to your spirit about? Yeah, Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. Do you know why he was saying that? You know, he's also said he can't do anything except for with the empowering of the Holy Spirit. So because the Spirit of God was within him, when he spoke, he was speaking with, he also said, I don't say anything but what I hear my Father saying. So he was saying what the Father was saying, and when he was releasing that, spirit and life came out of his mouth. And you can do that too. I really believe if we understood the authority that our words have, the authority that our prayers have, the power that our prayers have, we'd all be praying a lot more. <laughs> Probably be a lot less complaining and a lot more praying. <laughs> Just a thought. The prayers of righteous man are powerful and effective. That's what it says in James 1. <laughs> And then it talks about Elijah being just a man like us. And he prayed that it would not rain, and it did not rain for three and a half years. Then he prayed again, and it began to rain. A man just like us. You know what we do sometimes? We look, we read these stories, and, and, and you know, Sunday school maybe is to blame for part of it. I don't know, but maybe it's just what the enemy wants to do. And we all of a sudden put these people on such a pedestal. A pedestal that is unattainable mm -hmm. for us, or what seems to be. Mm -hmm. 
you know? And if you read the lives of most of these guys, they messed up a lot. And God used them anyway because some of them were willing. He used Jonah and he wasn't even willing. I mean, how could, how could he use that guy? And when the, the Ninevites repent, I mean, he's like kicked. I knew it. We knew they would repent. Well, they David. <laughs> David, you know, having an affair, killing somebody. Yeah. You know, Paul, you know, killing a bunch of people. And yet, what we've done is we've, like, oh, you know, the music that played just a minute ago. That's, <laughs> that's what plays when we think about them. And, you know, we've got them pictured yeah. somewhere up here. And, and we think, oh, these guys are great. And they were great. God used them in mighty ways, but they were also like us in a lot of ways. You said something, uh, I think it was Sunday, where you said that... Um, you were talking about the New Testament, and the people in them didn't have the New Testament. They were actually living the New Testament so that the New Testament could be living, could be written. Yeah. And I'm I'm thinking that we're also living in a new a new season. This is a yeah. new season that may not have been written mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. but we're writing a new story. Mm -hmm. This is, it's a new season. Yeah. yeah. Now, one of the things that the Lord <clears throat> talked to me about some time ago, he says, what I'm doing in this season will be not unlike the Azusa Street Revival, and it will change the church for generations to come. They will speak of what's happened in this season. And I believe yeah. that's where we're at right now. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. going to be a part of it. Oh, and it's, yeah. it's amazing. It's so exciting. You know, God's wanting to birth something fresh and new. Mm -hmm. He's wanting his children to actually come fully alive as children of God. Mm -hmm. Man, that's exciting. And we're going to get to that scripture we gotta keep in just a few off. minutes. Oh. <laughs> so, verse 12. So then, beloved ones, the flesh has no claims on us at all. Amen. And yeah. we have no further obligation to live in obedience to it. Huh. Yeah. Choice. Mm -hmm. For when you live controlled by the flesh, you are about to die. But if you live life of the Spirit... It puts death to corrupt to the cor corrupt ways of the flesh when uh, we then taste his abundant life. We get to taste his abundant life. So going on to 14. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty. Oh, come on. <laughs> leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. Mm. I'm, I'm, wow, you need to re read that. Yeah, read that again. <laughs> yeah. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance, enfolding you into the family of God. Full acceptance. Yes. And you will never feel orphaned. For as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of, t of tender affection, Beloved Father. Mm. Abba, Papa. Yeah. For the Holy That's Spirit. That's an intimate, intimate term. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being you are God's beloved child mm -hmm. have you ever said that I am God's beloved child and actually believed it <laughs> I mean this is where we have to get this we've got to get it he chose us we are his favorites. We are sons and daughters of the king of all kings. He adopted us as his favorite son or daughter. Now, as a prince or a princess comes authority, right? We have that authority, guys. It, it's probably a whole new thinking, but we got to get it. 
And I love, you know, Donna De Silva, of course, she's going to teach while she's here about changing atmospheres. You know, if we know who we are and we know who's within us, every time we walk into an atmosphere, it should shift. Mm -hmm. It really should. You know, there's been this thing in the church for so many years that big devil and little God. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to walk in fear all the time. You know, of don't go over there, don't go there, something's going to jump on you, and you know, all of those things. And I'm not saying be stupid, but I'm saying if we know who we are, we'll just declare some protection and do what God tells us to do. Yeah. You know, if something tries to jump on us, we tell it to get out of the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, God's looking for people that'll go into dark places to rescue those that he wants to save. Right. Amen? Amen? I mean, it's yeah. like... You know, in Zimbabwe last year, we're standing outside of a bar in a dark, dirty street. And fortunately, I had two big guys with me. It made me feel better. <laughs> and, you know, in an hour, hour and a half, we led 25 people to Jesus. Amen. Saw 15 people miraculously healed, probably at least 15. And saw 10 to 15 people filled with the Holy Spirit wow. out on the streets next to a bar. You know, I love it. Graham Cook's, Graham Cook tells about his son becoming a bartender. He was working in a bar, and people would come up to have drinks, and he would begin to prophesy destiny over them. And he began to see them transformed. And pretty soon, a lot of those people that he was releasing words to, the regulars, they were hardly drinking anything anymore. They were just yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like we, we've got to have that mindset as children of God. You know, we've got something to release everywhere we go. Yeah. Yeah. We have that ability to change atmospheres. Well, and really, when you, like, go to the bar, you're really looking for family. You're looking for something. Relationship. A relationship mm -hmm. or something that could give you yeah. hope. Mm -hmm. So... Sometimes you know, people in the bar are nicer than the people in the church. <laughs> oh, I say that out loud. Okay, I'm going to read this one Because that is true at times, unfortunately. It's not supposed to be. I'm going to read 18 again. No, 16. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us. As he whispers into our innermost being that you are God's beloved child. And since we are his true children... We qualify to share all his treasures, for indeed, we are heirs of God himself. What? Whoa! What did that say? <laughs> really? Yeah. And since we are his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures, for indeed, we are heirs of God himself. Whoa. Now think about that one for a second. Didn't just say that. I think we do need to say that. Yeah, and the whole qualified treasure thing. Can you lead us in repeating yeah. that? Should we close our eyes? Or does it matter? You do whatever you want. You do. You. <laughs> I'm doing me. Since we are his true children. Since we are his true children. We qualify. We qualify. To share all his treasures. To share all his treasures. For indeed, for indeed, we are heirs. We are heirs of God Himself. Of God Himself. Wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that He is and all that He has. Wow. <laughs> you guys, this is this is crazy. This is, this is like yeah. way too much for our, our human brains to. Yeah to get like right this minute but let it go in your innermost being just let it go like that song was saying let let go of your head let go of your heart and just receive what he has to say to us can you say that last one again it's just and since we are joined to christ we are all we also inherit all that he is and all that he has let's say that one Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah, say that again. We are joined to Christ. We are joined to Christ. 
So we inherit. So we inherit all that He is. All that He is. And all that He has. And all that He has. That he has. Hallelujah. Wow, that is so good. Is this not great news? This is great news. Wow. We will experience being co-glorified with Him, provided that we accept His sufferings as our own. So what are His sufferings? Yeah. If, if, you know, because I prayed I like about that. What you said it's, on Sunday. Huh? I like what you said on Sunday where you said Christ went to the cross, right? He was crucified. Sometimes we have our little crosses that we have to go, like, across the chicken line, <laughs> and we witness to somebody and make fun of us. That's our cross. Yeah, it's it's really about obedience. Yeah, really. It? It's really about obedience. Mm -hmm. You know, it's what so is it? And, and it is. We do go, we have mm -hmm. those little crosses in our lives of mm -hmm. what are they going to think of me? Or yeah. they're going to laugh at me? Or I'm what if God doesn't do anything? Or I'm going to be embarrassed? Or whatever that looks like. That we have to step across and go, well, that stuff doesn't really matter. Yeah. What if they get ill? Yeah. What if they experience the love of the Father in this moment? Mm -hmm. Amen. What if this is the first time anybody in their life has asked if they can pray for them? What if this is the first time they ever heard that God loved them? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. You know, it says that Jesus endured the cross because of the joy set before him. And what's the joy set before us in those situations to hopefully connect somebody to the Father? Yeah. Yeah. And I tell you what, when somebody receives Jesus because we've just been obedient and maybe we didn't even know the right things to say, we just kind of, the Lord told me one time, just open your mouth. I'll put something in there. And that's usually what happens. Sometimes it's not him. But, no. <laughs> usually it's him. But it's, it's the joy set before us. If you've never led anybody to Jesus, I'm telling you, it is an amazing thing. It's like, oh, Lord, thank you for what I do. Because I know that's changed life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the cross. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. I am convinced that any suffering we endure is less than nothing compared to the magnitude of glory that is about to be unveiled within us. Wow. Listen to this. <laughs> the entire universe is standing on tiptoe. <laughs> yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. The whole universe is waiting. All the creation is waiting. They're like, come on. When are they going to get it? They are the sons and daughters of the living king. They're all waiting for us. They're all waiting. They're yearning. They're like, on oh, All of creation. Isn't that amazing? Come on, yeah. if if all creation is that excited, there's got to be something in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's in Acts 1 where Jesus said, go into all the world preaching the gospel and even to all creation. Yeah. Is that in Acts 1 or somewhere Jesus Acts. gives that command that we're to preach to creation? That's amazing. Huh. Okay, I'm going to read that again. For the entire universe is standing on tiptoe yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. For against its will, the universe itself has had to endure the empty futility resulting from the consequences of human sin. Mm. Dang it! Don't ah. you know the great thing about unveiling? It's not talking about something that hasn't been created. It's talking That's about true. something that hasn't been shown to the world yet. Mm -hmm. You know, if a masterpiece, if a, if a painter has a masterpiece up here and it's veiled, the unveiling doesn't create the masterpiece. The masterpiece is already there. Yeah. That's so good. It's just taken off for the world to see. That's so good. Well, I asked the Lord that. How does this revealing take place? And he said, when my children get the revelation of who they are. And I feel like that's part of the calling out the gold in each other. Don't yeah. let each other go down the wrong road. Call them higher. Call them bigger, better, and more than what they think so that their mind shifts. It's a, it's a, everything is up here. Every, our whole battle 
is like yeah yeah uh, it's, it's it's all in the mind mm -hmm. but if we if we can really get and understand who we are and whose we are and we call like if we become everything that we're supposed to be and then we can help those around us become all that they're to be yeah. think about the, what you've just created it's interesting in Ephesians 4 right after um, it talks about it was Jesus who gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry so that there would be, uh, what is it, unity in the faith so that you would have the fullness of Christ. And I re really believe part of that unity in the faith is all of us understanding who we are together totally. as yeah. a group. And yeah. it's, it's about each one of us. Yeah. Becoming. Becoming, beginning, what What if we just all chose, Lord, I just want to be a vessel that I actually call the gold out in everybody that I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What if What if we had a room of people that one of our focuses was to just call out the gold in one another mm -hmm. constantly? You know, um, Hebrews 10, it says, you know, don't forsake gathering together. Right before that, it says, consider, brothers, how you might spur one another on in love and good deeds, not forsaking gathering together so when we come together there actually is a call for every one of us to help spur one another on how's the best way to spur somebody on begin to see, tell them the gold that you see in their life Amen. you know I, I'm done with the days where I was getting beat with the two by four yeah. Yeah. I want to hear from a God who declares goodness over me who declares who I am and what he created me for and that I actually do have things to offer the world and to those around me. Yeah. Can we just pray into that for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Can we just say this? I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Father, make me a conduit of blessing. Make me a conduit of blessing. That I would have an anointing. That I would have an anointing. To call out the gold. To call out the gold. In those around me. In those around me. Jesus name, amen. Jesus name, amen. Okay, I'm gonna go somewhere else with that though. So, really, I mean, there's there's a lot of people who could call out the gold in others, but they don't call out the gold in themselves. Ooh. And you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. But if you don't love yourself and you're not speaking yeah. amazing things to yourself, and you don't believe in yourself. And yourself is not the best yourself you could be, then how can we call out the gold in others? So pray into that, would ya? <laughs> how about this? Okay, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Father forgive, me forgive me if I've made any agreements, made any agreements with, the enemy with the enemy that would cause. That would cause me to not love myself. I break those agreements now. In Jesus' name. I ask you to heal my heart. And my soul. And my spirit. And help me to see myself. The way you see me. Amen. How's that? So, I know. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Okay, so, <clears throat> but now with eager expectation, all creation longs for freedom from its slavery to decay and to experience with us the wonderful freedom coming to God's children. To this day, we are aware of the universal agony and groaning of creation as if it were in the contractions of labor. Whoa, come on. There it is. <laughs> and it's not just creation. We who have already experienced the first fruits of the Spirit also inwardly groan as we passionately long to experience our full status as God's sons and daughters, including our physical bodies being yeah. transformed. Hey, Thank you, Jesus. On. What, what was that last? Wow. Can you read that again? Which one? I don't know the last. Body being transformed. And, and it's not yeah. just creation. We who have.
have already experienced the first fruits of the Spirit, first also fruit. inwardly groan as we passionately long to experience our full status as God's sons and daughters, including our physical bodies being transformed, for this is the hope of our salvation. So we in inwardly groan. Wow. Can we do that together? You guys know, I don't know how to in inwardly groan, but I'm going to give it a try. You guys ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, but hope wow. means that we must trust and wait for what is still unseen. Uh, Lord, wow. I, I just pray that you would touch every single heart here. Yeah, yeah. That you would go in and you would transform all of our minds and our hearts. You would transform our body, soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm. That you would help us to understand who we are yeah. by the power of your Holy Spirit to the innermost being of who we are would you just show us show us who we are yeah show yeah. us what you've got yes take us to a new level yeah take us higher and deeper and more and better and bigger jesus that we would glorify your name that that your name would be known across nations because we get to understand who we are yeah. mm -hmm. thank you Jesus thank you. Mm, yeah. <laughs> wow hey would you buy right here can you guys you probably can't stick around can you stick around pray with people okay so we got five highly anointed <laughs> amazing prophetic individuals that are going to be up here take place up here and if you don't you can hang out or whatever you want to do for the most part and uh, have a good time we love you guys Bless you. drive safe Me. going home thank you thank you
Montana, that was quite cool. Yeah. yeah, they got some timber cut buddies that they pulled up their whole company and when I was down in Southern Oregon, cutting timber with them, and, and three of them moved over to Montana. We kept hearing from just awesome hunting and fishing and whatever, and just the property they got for real reasonable, and all the timber on it. Yeah. We were kind of small, we were little babies. Shannon worked for the University of Montana. Oh, wow. So I was the manager of the facility there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, you know, you get these yeah, yeah. blog yeah. Hey, guys. Hey, uh, guys. Carl had a word. Uh, like for a guy, so you girls don't need to listen, but you can't hear it. For a guy? For a guy, I listen. Yeah, no, like, yeah, it's not a good thing. We'll have to listen. So we got a bunch of guys back here, and if it, if it uh, rings true in your spirit, you know, just receive it, so. so. Are you ready? I'm not sure I am. There you go. Right on. That's kind of low in Men, people have a tendency to, you know, if you have a bad father in your life, you know, in your natural life, you have a hard time relating to your, your heavenly father in a good way sometimes. I mean, whether, whether you're a man or a woman. But in this hour that we're in, what we're talking about today, the, there's, you know, we want to live from heaven to earth, correct? And so some somebody... And I specifically think of a, as a man has an issue with you know living from heaven to earth, thinking of the mansions and the or the and the many dwelling place you know stuff. That you don't see yourself as fitting in a castle, if you want to call it that. You just don't see that you have that capability to fit into that. And I felt God was saying is that you need to understand that. That earth is a reflection of, of heaven, not heaven, you know, being just one thing. And and you can you can minister out of heaven from the mountaintop, from the valley, from the meadow, from a rocky place, I mean, you know, whatever you envision your feet being on. That is yeah. is uh, it's not doesn't have to look like the inner court or the or the heaven holy of holies. You just all you have to be is function from your heart from heaven to earth and he wants to release you to be able to function in that capacity from you know the meadows of your life rather than the mansions of that you feel like you don't fit in mm -hmm. so, so anyway this if that rings true in your spirit just you know, talk, have a conversation with the Lord, or have Charles pray for you. There you go. Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Yeah. Yes, I see you too. Yes, I want to start yeah. coming. Yeah. Tuesdays are yeah. good. Good, uh, good uh, to be. Oh, yeah. Just had a long class. Yeah, there you go. I'm here to be so much right now. This weekend, we don't have anything going on. 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 And uh, for my graduate, I'm going to uh, be a position assistant to go PA school. Yeah, I think there's multiple across the country, but I won't go to yeah, uh, HSU yeah. to, to do it. So yeah, yeah. that's plan. It should be really good. Yeah. 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 So is our ministry. She's one of the starters in the industry. Yeah, she oversees that. Yeah. 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 Lots of support. Yeah. 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 And her husband, her husband, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, that's right. That's what those things are. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah right. 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 Especially when you tell them how much I said. No, not to Ben. My Ben is brutal. Yeah, and I'll see. I wouldn't even like uh, I don't mind going back to the old crest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead, I grew up. That's why I get like you know love about it. 
Yeah. I see more trees than people ever. <laughs> my mom uh, taught me at the high school there in the town, and my dad was retired, so a little bit more than the community, but everyone, everyone knows the world there. Yeah, and yeah, that's what I've known. Like, like, my, most of my friends that like, graduated are in the mill right now. Yeah. They're happy with the money they're making. Yeah. To them, that's what life is. It is. Yeah, it catches up to you later. Maybe don't regret it. Yeah, well, no. Hey, well, you can drive Joe, right? I'm going to just go back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? Someone has to do it. It's an